When we started this safety-obsessed television program 14 years ago, our mission was to take the lousiest motorists in the country and make them safer behind the wheel. That's it. We taught the physical aspects of safe driving, and we got through to our students. But that was before smartphones had been invented. These days, we still do teach the physical aspects of safe driving. However, we spend way too much time trying to convince people that texting while driving is not worth it. And you would think that that would be an easy concept to get across. And it is! It's so easy to understand that, in fact, most people here already understand it because they've crashed while texting and driving. More than half the people on the show this year have done that, yet they say they're going to continue texting and driving because, well, because they'd rather crash a couple of times every year than feel disconnected. What is that? To me, that is not simply a bad driving decision. To me, that's the behavior of a sociopath. Look, I know you tuned into this show so you could see something funny. I know, and I'd like to be funny for you. But given the fact that more than a quarter of the crashes that happen on Canadian roads these days involve cell phones, I'm just not feeling particularly funny at the moment. This is Canada's worst driver. Six licensed motorists remain in the running to be named Canada's worst driver. And all but one of them have crashed while texting. Watch what you're doing, Bright. You're in the other lane. Oh, sorry. Yet, those five still continue to text and drive. What's that noise? That was just my phone. I'm talking about Brittany. A self-admitted cell phone addict. Watch out for that. Oh, what was that? Next, there's Brandon, also a self-admitted cell phone addict. I've hit cars, I've hit poles. That one, I was also texting and driving. Then there's Alexis. You guessed it, a self-admitted cell phone addict. I'm gonna be extra set of eyes if you're gonna be a dumbass. I'm looking at the road. Yeah. Which brings us to Desi, a self-admitted cell phone addict. Driving selfie. And finally, there's Darius, a man who says he's not addicted to his cell phone. He just likes it too much to put down. Don't let the police see you on your phone. It's a big charge. Mm, police can suck my Probably not likely. The non-cell phone addicted Canada's worst driver nominee is Carleen who, after being struck by a car while walking 13 years ago, is too afraid to really drive much anymore. Oh, get me out of here. According to the Canadian Automobile Association, 26% of the crashes on our nation's roads these days involve phones. And that... Uh, excuse me, I, I really, I should get this. Hello. I know, 26%, it's huge. Well, that's what we're trying to figure out right now, actually, is how to demonstrate just how enormous phones on roads have become. Yeah, that's not a, a terrible idea. Let's try it now. Phones are huge on roads. Excuse me, I'm, I'm gonna use this phone right now, actually, to... Call 911. It's it's that big of an emergency. Oh. Hello? 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 Hi. Yeah. Can you can you please send some emergency response vehicles to the driver rehabilitation center? There's going to be some some horrible car crashes. That's right. Yeah. People crying, twisted metal, the whole bit. That's because it's time for our annual 
distracted driving demonstration. We've been doing our distracted driving demonstration for a decade now. And it has caused almost 50 bad drivers to promise to put their cell phone down. I'll never use my phone while driving. I will never use my cell phone again. I'll never text again or answer a phone or nothing. When Brittany texts while driving, she often has her real pet dog draped around her neck. Once Brittany gets familiar with this easy course... It's not challenging in the slightest, is it? Not at all. It's time to start adding distractions, like eating a hamburger patty, yeah, which is something that Brittany routinely does while driving. So what do you do? You go to, like, a fast food joint and ask for a burger with no bun? Yeah, and no pickles. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, what's going on there? I was trying to ravel up my burger wrapper. Oh my god. Oh my god. Brittany says she's had approximately 30 serious accidents. Holy I don't know how I ever did it. Oh! Mia, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, oh. Mia. Brittany's sister, Mia, recently banned Brittany from driving her children. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How many accidents would you say were caused by distracted driving? I would say about 80%. And the bulk of those accidents were due to texting. All right, I just texted you. Before Brittany can read my text, she receives a real phone call. Hello? Hi, <laughs> Sheila. Oh my, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God! Surely now, Brittany will promise to drive without her cell phone. So what can you do to convince me that you're not going to text and drive anymore? I have no idea. Can you tell me that? Well, I'm not going to say to you that I'll never text and drive again. I have no idea how I haven't killed anybody yet. Brandon broke his arm just a week before coming to rehab, which makes doing the distracted driving demonstration impossible. So... Sarah, the woman who nominated Brandon as Canada's worst driver, will do the demonstration for him. What, what is Brandon's absolute number one worst distraction? Uh, the tie between the phone and the comb. The comb is as bad as the phone? I find that hard to believe. No, 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 it really is. I go to work with that, I sleep with it, I wake up with it, it's with me every single day. Why don't you uh, do your best Brandon combing his hair impression? All right. He does this what happened there? I was distracted by looking in the mirror. Have you gotten into hairy situations because of your comb, Brandon? I've had tons of brushings with, with death, with, like near-death experiences and You've had tons of near-death experiences while driving, tons of them. Within one year of, of driving, I think I've had more close calls to death than somebody who's had their license for 10 years. Well, yeah, I've only had one brush with death in the 20 years that I've been driving. Just texting Sarah here, I'm writing down, how stupid is texting and driving? Trying to respond, Sarah loses total control. Holy This is literally every day you do this. This demonstration has no effect on Brandon. If you, if you left here today, you'd be texting immediately, wouldn't you? Yeah. If it didn't teach you, I hope it teaches somebody else. When we come back, <laughs> the rest of Canada's most distracted drivers experience our demonstration. I feel like we've demonstrated enough, Andrew. Holy 
Canada's worst drivers are engaged in our annual distracted driving demonstration. I always drive distracted. Oh my God, oh my God. <sighs> Mia. Darris says that while texting, he has caused a lot of rear end collisions, me rear ending somebody else. A lot of rear end collisions. Yeah, quite a few. I would say four, four plus. And he shares this with us so unapologetically. That's Shamala Kiru, our therapist here at the rehab center. Cam Woolley is our legal expert. Philippe Letourneau teaches high speed driving maneuvers. And Tim Danter is our head driving instructor. At the end of each episode, these experts help me decide who should graduate. At the end of our series, they'll help me name Canada's worst driver. And if Darris keeps laughing about rear-ending people, the title might be his. <laughs> well, I rear-end everybody else. I guess you've never had serious whiplash because the people who get rear-ended don't find this funny in the slightest. Do you drive distracted every single time you drive? Um, yes. Mom, do you have days where you worry that he's not gonna come home in the car? All the time. Can you help me understand then why you continue to pay off bills for him? Darius's mother, Jen, pays for his vehicles, his insurance, and his tickets. But can she help me understand why? No. Well, what do you mean, no? Like, why, why do you do it? I don't want him to lose his license, because I feel like he should be old enough to be driving and taking care of himself. Oh. And eventually, he'll start getting it. But isn't taking care of himself meaning not relying on mom to pay for his insurance? Yes. So why do you pay? This demonstration course is to be driven consistently at 30 kilometers an hour, which Darius could do when he wasn't distracted. Yeah, I'm good. But now that he is distracted. Cigarette's gone. Opening up the bottle now. He's slowing down to a crawl in every corner. Fold to the floor, I swear to God. He doesn't get it. You want me to light another smoke? You want me to text you back? I'm doing two things at once, three things, four things. We never ask drivers to do four things at once during this demonstration. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's enjoying this. Here we go again. Holy Holy ah! Holy Holy the laughing is going to make people who watch think that you don't care about the people who die on the road. Why? We're actually trying to make a serious point about that, what you're doing right now. Stir! He's on your roads. Yours. <laughs> Darius's entitled behavior truly disturbs me. I don't get what I'm supposed to learn from this. I understand that dri distracted driving is not right. But you do it anyways. But I do it anyways. Alexis doesn't just text behind the wheel. Where the f is my arm? This single mother changes entire outfits. Hey! 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 hey. Jerry is the professional driving instructor who taught Alexis how to drive five years ago. What are you doing? I spun out because there's rocks. You didn't spin out once when you had two hands on the wheel. You are right. OK, I'm changing my shoes now. While changing shoes? Who changes their shoes while driving? Alexis uses her left foot to accelerate, and that's something she does on the highway. Oh, oh. The worst part is she seems to not be affected by this at all, just like the rest of them. No, no, where are you going? Believe it or not, Alexis says she has been affected by our demonstration. Everyone from Thunder Bay, 
I promise you, I'm not going to text and drive anymore. Desi often has her hands full with beverages while driving. Yep. Desi smokes while driving. Oh my god, this is terrifying. Yeah, it is. And according to her good friend Drew, Desi sends texts while barreling down dirt roads. It's no joke. It's really not. How fast do you drive on these dirt roads while texting? A lot. A lot faster than this. Yeah. At least 100. You wrote back to me, it's extremely fovkunk stouffed. A. <sighs> Desi gets the point. I, I promise I'm not going to drive distracted anymore, man. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers drive with Tim in public. So the dotted lines means that either side could pass. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. A yellow light means stop if you can do so safely. Really? Canada's worst drivers aren't just getting taught and tested at the rehab center this season. With me at your side, we're going to do some training on the freeway. OK? You OK with that? Are you? Sure. They're also all getting public driving lessons with Tim. Throw your signal on. OK. OK. Oh. Keep oh. going. Get ahead. Okay. Keep yeah. on. Listen, Big focus trucks. on my voice. OK. Check your yeah. mirror. I did. Good. And Check I over have, your I shoulder. Can get in. I can get in. Excellent. Good truck. Carlene's two lessons focused on highway driving. Merge at the speed that the flow's going on the highway. Right? OK. Desi's lesson focused on understanding what other drivers might do. If you want to be able to predict the actions of, of other people, mm -hmm. look at the tires. And speeder Alexis spent most of her time with Tim just trying to obey the speed limit. Oh, I wish you could understand what it's like to be a person who feels the need to be fast because it's so difficult. Like, yeah. right now I'm just so... Anxious. I'm sorry. This, so I mastered the skill of driving with my knees. That, well, yeah, no, we don't do that. Would you do that with your child in the car? Ooh. During Darius's lesson last episode, we do what we call a commentary. He resisted Tim's request to do a driver commentary. Yeah, you kind of distracted me with this, like for sure. The driver commentary helps drivers prioritize what's going on around them by listing out loud everything that's relevant to them on the road at any given moment. But Darius thought Tim was asking for a commentary just to confuse him. I'm getting a little pissed off because I really don't like you. Before Brittany's drive, she angles the side mirrors down as low as they'll go. Now that looks like it's really pointing down and you're seeing a lot of ground. I always put it way down so I can see the lines to make sure I'm in the lines. I struggle driving inside the lines sometimes, like even if I'm not texting and driving. When Brittany says she has trouble staying within the lines, she's not kidding. What was that? So that was the lane departure. OK. Tim's vehicle beeps. What was that? Just the lane departure. Okay. Every time it leaves its lane. lane. Yeah, it's just the lane departure. And when Brittany drives. OK. The car leaves its lane a lot. Where are you looking? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oncoming vehicles scare her off the road to the right. When there's an empty road ahead, Brittany veers too far left. Whoopsie. And tailgating vehicles also scare her off the road. Lines have changed, so that yeah. guy, if he wants to pass, could pass, because they're dotted now, right? Oh, OK. That's yeah, what so that keep means? Looking straight ahead, okay. yep. 
So the dotted lines means that either side could pass. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. I always thought that the solid lines meant that you can pass. No, absolutely not. When we come back. Ready for more training? 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 Drivers are taught and tested on the art Break. of swerving and avoiding. Holy that was scary. Break. Your word is break. Break. Can you use that in a sentence, please? Break. If an obstacle suddenly appears in front of you while driving and you don't have enough room between your car and the obstacle to fully break, you will break that obstacle if you attempt to break. That's, that's confusing. <laughs> but I do know what you should do if that driving scenario ever happens to you. Um, if a suddenly appearing obstacle just comes right out in front of you, you, you shouldn't break if you're traveling at a, at a high speed. What you should do is S-W-E-R-V-E-A-V-O-I-D. <clears throat> -E -E and then B-R-A-K-E. For clarity, Philippe Letourneau will now explain. Since way back in season six, Philippe has been teaching this technique at the rehab center. Swerve, avoid, and only then break. To swerve hard, avoid, stabilize, and break. Swerve, <laughs> avoid, and then break. Oh. Okay. It's a lesson that all drivers should learn. I gotta swerve, 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 oh. avoid, and then get on the brake. Okay. So let's all learn it now. Start by accelerating up to 50. We're chatting, we're chatting, blah, 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 and all of a sudden, something's gonna jump in front of me. I'm gonna have to swerve really hard one way, really hard the other way, and then come to a stop. Okay, that's gonna be hard for me. Holy <laughs> balls. <laughs> 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 Once again, if you do not have enough room to stop, and all of a sudden something gets in front of us, you gotta go through the opening, and only then break. Yeah, right, I'm gonna be able to do that. Why? I'm gonna break. It's well, gonna just happen by, like, habit. If you swerve really hard, and you start breaking, what's gonna happen? You're actually going to transfer a lot of weight at the front, and the car is already turning. You may create a pivot point, a pivot point, and that could cause the vehicle to skid. When Darris tries to swerve and avoid at 70 kilometers an hour, he instinctively just touches the brake, which causes the car to pivot and skid. Left. Holy that was scary. The scary skid unfolded exactly as Philippe said it would. When Darius hit the brake, the vehicle's weight pushed forward, making the front end heavier. As he turned the wheel, the weight shifted again, overloading this wheel, which became a pivot point. The car then loses traction and skids out of control. This is why Philippe says to swerve, avoid, stabilize, and only then brake. <laughs> That's a very good lesson. Thank you. When Canada's worst drivers attempt the maneuver at 50 kilometers an hour... And go left. Okay. You just went like this. Alexis and Carlene understeer. Uh -oh. uh, uh, yeah. you, you went like this. Yeah, little old lady move. Darius oversteers. That was harder than I thought. And Brandon lets go of the wheel altogether. Left. Break. But eventually... Wow! 
Did I do it? Did I do it? Did I... You're asking me. Oh, f I did it! Everyone gets used to successfully and repeatedly. <gasps> okay. Okay. Pulling off this swerve and avoid technique. Yes. Okay. Yay. And we're gonna go right. Yes! I did it! <laughs> I did it! Which means it's time for the Swerve and Avoid Challenge. In which drivers will come down this laneway at 70 kilometers an hour. Just before they reach the end, an eye-catching obstacle will appear in one of these two gaps. Drivers must then look towards the side with no obstacle and steer that way to safety. For this challenge, the vehicle being driven will be our brand new Mustang. Get up to 70 kilometers an hour. Canada's worst drivers have been brutal with the speeds this year, as always. We say 70, they go 95. There's 70 exactly. Where is it? Oh my god, it's a dinosaur! With... <laughs> they never tell me what it's going to be. <laughs> of all of the things to avoid, that's the most attractive thing I've seen in a while. I wanted to stare. What the hell was that? That was a sleepy-eyed dinosaur in high heels. Brandon says he's had all the practice he needs. Like, I'm actually really confident that I can pass. Brandon, can he do this? I don't know. 60. 70, off the accelerator, left, right. <laughs> right, I'm half handicapped, and I just made it. Going 70, maintaining in a Mustang. Brandon thought he'd fail this challenge. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> I did it. I passed the challenge. When Carlene came to a stop in our two previous high-speed challenges, <laughs> she had full-blown panic attacks. So we decided that after completing this episode's high-speed challenge, she should not stop. Don't stop this time. We always get you to stop. Yeah. Just continue driving as if you swerved around something and then and continue then kept driving. driving. Okay. All the way to the end of the runway. Will do. Here's Carlene. Is she able to go 70 kilometers an hour and not look at something that freaks her out? Let's see. No, don't do that. <sighs> I did good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I hit. You did. I know I hit. I know, <laughs> but oh my god, it didn't feel bad. Excellent. Allowing Carlene to continue driving gave her something to focus on, which seems to have helped. <laughs> I know I hit, but I didn't feel bad. For someone who hit two things, I'm pretty damn impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Desi will do this challenge in the rain. Oh my god, this car terrifies me. Desi's speed terrifies me. No, I'm going too fast. I'm going too fast. Ah! Oh. Way to go, Desi! Woo! Desi steered safely, but she has to stop speeding. I didn't kill anything. No. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers run the Swerve and Avoid Challenge. Oh, oh! How fast were you going? Um. Do you think it was conceivable that you were going too fast, young lady? Canada's worst drivers have learned how to swerve and thus avoid a suddenly appearing obstacle. Now, which way is it going to go? They're being tested on that skill. And Brittany 
who says she's skidded into many deer, is up next. Yeah, like I would try to stop, obviously, but by the time they got to the front of the car, they'd be, they'd be gone. This is exactly that moment when you don't have enough time to stop before hitting something, you need to swerve. Are you ready? Avoid and swerve, avoid and swerve, avoid and swerve, avoid and swerve. Oh, my God, I just demolished that whole situation back there. That's because... Brittany didn't look where she wanted to go. I accidentally shut my eyes. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Alexis! has been speeding in every single high-speed challenge she's done. Will she speed today? I don't know. Calling your speed out, will it help? Holy crap. I gotta get up to 70. Alexis sails past 70 and even past 90. Oh, my God, where's the f <laughs> Oh. oh. What the heck? For Alexis, that's not really jaw-dropping. This is jaw-dropping. I avoided the thing. I think I made it through the opening. What? Not scary. Very. I'm like 99% sure I made it through the opening. You think you made it through the opening? Oh. You didn't realize you went through the wall. Oh. I f***ed this place up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. I really didn't think I hit it, man. I thought I, like, didn't hit it at all. I don't think I hit it as bad as they're making it sound. You No hit way. You, I hit it that bad and you didn't did. notice. Oh, my gosh. I think I black out. Darris is next. So far in rehab, Darris has passed every single driving challenge. 70, hun. Because driving skills are not his issue. Keeping his cool in public is his issue. Oh. Yep, as always, perfect. Was that 70? Yep. Darris says he'll drive safely in public from now on. You want to graduate? I want to graduate. You want him to graduate? Yes. Why? Because he's improved, and I believe him. Well, I got an idea. Tim, why don't you take him out, and if he can do a good job, great. We, we'll let him go. If he can't, I'm all right with keeping him. Before I start the car, I just wanted to apologize for the other day saying that I disliked you. Um, I thought you were trying to muck me up with the uh, visualizing, and I right. didn't know that it was a teaching technique. Oh, okay. Now, a cynical person might not believe Darius. I've learned a lot in this program. But he is saying all the right things. I think I've learned a lot about um, <clears throat> losing my temper on the road. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It doesn't help anybody. Tim wants Darris to again try the driver commentary that caused all of the animosity during their first drive. The commentary is meant as an aid. And with that... I see 50 kilometers ahead, so I'm going to increase my speed up to 50. Yep. Darris delivers perfect commentary for the next half hour. We got a light coming up with an intersection. We got people on the right. And we'll turn left. We got cars coming at us to the left, and we're going to be turning left of the lights. Well done. Very important to be aware of everything that's going on while you're driving. You've demonstrated to me really good driving here today. Thank you. When we come back, are you a different person if we put you back on the road? 110%. Darris pleads his case for graduation. You're overselling it there, kid. In this episode, 
Canada's worst drivers learned to swerve into void. They drove in public with Tim. See, I always thought that the solid lines meant that you can pass. No. Oh. And those of them that drive distracted... Oh my god, oh my god, okay. ...went through our annual distracted driving demonstration. I understand that distracted driving is not right, but you do it anyways. But I do it anyways. Which seemed to have the biggest effect on me. Three distracted drivers. Three people who say they're going to continue driving distracted. Now it's time to decide who this episode's graduate should be. And it will not be Brandon. You have no idea how disappointed I was overall with the distracted driving demonstration this season. You and others said you have regret about cell phone use behind the wheel, but in all honesty, you just know that you're gonna keep on doing it. Correct? Correct, yeah. Have you ever, while driving, gotten interesting or important text, ever? No. What are you doing? I'm driving. What are you doing? I'm also driving. Ooh, oh, mm, LOL. Here's a picture of a trumpet. Day to day. Brittany also couldn't promise to put her cell phone down while driving. I don't have self-control when it comes to that. Will the other drivers use their phones behind the wheel when they leave here? Absolutely not. No. I promise that I'm going to be putting my phone away when I'm driving from now on. Do you want to graduate? Um, <laughs> I want to, but I'm not going to, I don't think. Like, I kind of up in the challenges, like, big time. Darius aced the challenges in this entire season. Which begs the question, are you a different person if we put you back on the road? 110%, a 180 person. Yeah, you're overselling it there, kid. It's hard for you to see everything that goes on outside of the realm of this. Mm hmm absolutely. So you wouldn't, you couldn't possibly know what I've been through, and I'll just leave it at that. Is it finally time for Darius to graduate? I say it's time for him to go. Shamila agrees, but... I actually don't see any change at all in his attitude. So I don't think he should, I don't think he should graduate. Um, but I don't think he should stay either. And so what does that mean? Do I just release him? Do I kick him out? I like How release. Cam also feels that Darius should be released instead of graduated because... I don't think his personality's changed. I think he's manipulative and I think he's told us what we want to hear. We've caught him in lies. I think we're wasting our time with him. Um, well, I, I, I disagree that we're wasting our time with him, actually. I think that slowly but surely we're chipping away at someone who's a potential horrifying risk on the roads. Philly? He, he didn't make a change, uh, and I'm happy with the change, and I want to spend more time with the other one, so I feel like he deserves to graduate. I feel the same way. So that's two votes to graduate, Darius, two votes to simply release him, and Tim is on the fence. Darius, why are you still here? For the last three episodes, you've been the only person who even says they want to graduate. And finally, the experts do agree that it's time for you to go home. However, they don't agree on whether you should get the honorable title of graduate or not. Some of them just think you should be released. So I'm gonna ask you the question. Do you feel like you've done enough to deserve the title graduate? Or do you just wanna be released? Or, or do you even care? I do believe I'm a graduate and I do care. Yeah? Yeah. Well, in that case, sir, I'm gonna say this to you. You're a graduate, because caring is all it takes, all right? Yes. Congrats, man. When we met Darius, 
he was truly foul behind the wheel. You man, you He threatened other drivers. You want me to go side with you? He cut off other drivers. He even assaulted other drivers. Are you stupid? Are you stupid? Yeah, you, you. You, buddy. But no matter what gross things he did behind the wheel, oh, Darius's mother, who was paying his $7,000 a year insurance bill, would simply allow it. <laughs> Before changing Darius's driving behavior, we needed to understand what influenced Darius as a driver. Yeah, go yourself. How about that? And we learned that he has a very bad past when it comes to vehicles. How bad? Bad enough where someone died. Who, who died? It was like my brother, but it was my cousin. We grew up together. At age 12, Darius was sitting next to his favorite cousin when the car they were in crashed and that cousin was killed. Everybody else on the road. The guilt created by surviving that crash is part of the reason why Darius drove like he had a death wish. Oh, I know, she's I know. Red, it's she's okay. red, it's okay. she's it's red. It's okay. If you die in a car, are you okay with that? Yeah. Even more shocking oh, <laughs> is that when Darius was 14. I'm not going to stop for you, you stupid. His brother used his truck to murder a man. He hunted down a guy and killed him with the car, with the truck? He didn't hunt him down. He was in the parking lot. Second degree murder and convicted. And convicted, yes. What does this have to do with your everyday driving? I would say a lot. I would say a lot, too. But now I'm understanding that I don't want to be that person. I want to be a better person for myself, for my mom, for everybody around me. Changing Darius and his mother began with brutal honesty. I, I don't get it. You don't actually seem like a good person. You don't Do come off as a, as a good person. Do we have to put that on camera? Yeah, yeah, that's because we're, we're dealing with honesty. And that's one of the things that I don't understand about you either, Mom, is that you say you want to make change, and then you sit in the car with him while he acts like an Don't you? I do. Eventually, I'm not going to insure Darius anymore. I can't. Jen forced unemployed Darius to take financial responsibility for his own driving. If you were to guess, how, how long until you'd be able to afford to drive again? <laughs> At least a year or two. And if you were to guess, is your mom going to hold herself to her word that she's not going to pay for your insurance? I believe so, yes, because my mom and my stepdad firmly agree on I should not be on the road. Now that he's been cut off by his mother. That's really good. I've learned a lot in this program. Darius does seem truly interested in changing his ways. You've demonstrated to me really good driving here today. Thank you. Jen thinks the change is real. Oh, beautiful. He's done so well. I'm very proud. But has Darius truly changed? Thank you, guys. I'm the graduate. Rehab worked. I think Darius has changed. I really do. Way to go, Darius. You're carrying the good name of the rehab center out there, hey? So keep on caring. Please. Please, man. Do the remaining nominees care whether or not they graduate? Well, you better believe they do, because whoever doesn't will be named Canada's worst driver. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. I'm gonna botch it. The nominees show us how well they can perk. Stop right there, stop! Stop, stop, stop. In Canada's worst parking lot? 
Was that a hit? They reverse a trailer using wacky new technology. The technology can kiss my ass. And then things get extra wacky on our annual reverse 180 degree spin out challenge. I'm gonna swear now. You swear. Hundred and ten percent a one eighty person.